tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. A hand has five fingers, usually, and today we'll create a hand with three fingers, two fingers plus the thumb. Why is that? Well, because of simplicity. When you're alone, working on your own, you need to create some kind of geometry. That's the starting point. That's called modeling. And of course, you're familiar with modeling and that's how we will start today. After modeling, you need to rig your model. That means you build a skeleton into your model. Why do you need a skeleton? Because you want the hand to and the fingers to animate in a natural way. And a skeleton is not deformable. For example, you can't stretch your finger forward. It's just a fixed length. And that's what a rig is about. So you do rigging. Once you've inserted your rig, your skeleton, into the geometry, you need to bind that skin to the rig. That is called skinning. And finally, you start animating. There are many more steps involved if you want to have a skeleton which is easy to use, but uh, we'll stick to this tiny process which involves quite a bit of knowledge about Maya and about computer animation. So we'll start with geometry. I'm in the polygon modeling section here and I start with a polygon box. It's called a cube. And I slightly extend it and flatten it and extend it in this direction, for example. And now we'll need to think about our fingers, three fingers. And I want the three fingers to point in two fingers in this direction and the thumb right here. That means I go to the polygon cube one node and here I have the subdivisions in the width and in the depth and I change them from one to two. Not the height, only the subdivisions in the depth and the width. So this is perfectly all right and now I right mouse click and select the faces. This is the first face. This is for one of the fingers. And I invoke the extrude command which sits here. And I move it out, scale it down with these boxes here. This is my first finger. And here you see divisions. And actually we can choose three that means we can have a nice deformation for our finger number one. Now I select this one and I repeat that last command. I could click here, but I can click, press the key G, go. It means we start the same process again. And I make this thinner in all dimensions. And I want three divisions, two fingers. And this is a nice start. And here is the thumb. Thumb is slightly more complicated because it uh, has a, well, it, we need to think about rotation. I press the key G and now I move this out. And uh, the thumb wants to go in this direction. That's why we need rotation. And uh, we have the scaling tools here, these boxes. We have the translation tools, these ones. But we don't have the rotation tools, that's why I need to click on this circle. Once you clicked on this circle, you see you can rotate it with a green, which is the up axis, indicator. And I move it over here and I rotate it slightly and I make it thinner, no thinner and thinner in this direction. Very good. So I have a hand with two ordinary fingers and a thumb. Right mouse click, object mode. This is our hand. We want to insert joints now. We do the rigging process, which is the second part. If you want to insert joints, you need to go to the rigging tab here. And this is the icon we'll use, create joints. 
By the way, skeletons consist of joints and bones. The joints are the connections between the bones. So let's go to the top window now, which is here. I deactivated the grid. This is this icon here, because it's only irritating in this case. And I click here. So I create the first joint, is a joint, not a bone. And here is the second one, and here is the third one. I cannot see the proper x-ray. That's why I do the x-ray joints again in this window, because it's uh, the top window now. Uh, by the way, here is the perspective window with the x-ray. So I have one, two, three joints and two bones, typical for character animation. Now comes a little bit of a trick. It has to do with the following. When you continue creating joints in this direction, for example, or in this direction, this will be one hierarchy. This is the very low member of that hierarchy, and this is the very high member of that hierarchy. And if you want to create a branch here, it is lower in the hierarchy, uh, it gives you a problem with a clean hierarchy. This sounds complicated, but uh, this is the way how you go about it. You click on this icon again, because you create yet another hierarchy. And without a connection from here to there, I would just click here and create four joints and press Enter. Now I do the same thing again. Press the key G to repeat the last command. One, two, three, four. And finally, G. One, two, three, four. And pressing Enter exits this command. Now have a look at the hierarchy here. The first one is this starting arrangement of where the elbow is and it, it lands in the in the palm of the hand. Then we have this hierarchy, this hierarchy and hierarchy. Why do I say hierarchy? Well, for example, let's open the this finger here and with a shift key you can open all the joints. So this is very low in the hierarchy, this one. This is further up. And uh, in Maya it's called parenting, actually. It's a one, this is the parent of this one. This is the parent of this one. Now I hide the hand, H. I want to parent these three branches to this point. This point is called the joint number one. Is it? No, it isn't. It's the joint number three, because I had to open this hierarchy here. This is joint number two, this joint number one. I want to parent these branches to this joint. And uh, this is how I go about it. I select, so it's joint number three. I select this one, that one, and that one. You see them here. And I middle mouse drag them onto the joint. And now I have a hierarchy under joint number three are the three fingers now. And Maya created these connections here. Now I have a clean hierarchy. This one is as dependent on all these nodes as this one. No privilege here. Now I can unhide the cube again. So it sits here and in the perspective view I see that the arrangement is quite okay. If you have a problem with the joints and bones being too big, go to Windows, Settings Preferences and Preferences. And in the preferences, you find the kinematics. The kinematics is exactly what we're dealing with here. And here is the joint size. So this is just fine. Now we can already animate our joints. For example, and this is a typical thing, we rotate these things, but the skin does not move with the joint rotation. So uh, what we'll do now is we select our skeleton and in addition to that we select our skin and here you find skin and here you bind the skin. You bind the skeleton to the geometry. 
it's done now, it's very fast. In more complex situations, it takes a while until all the binding is being done. Now, when I select this joint here, you see colors already. Uh, and do, do it by rotation because you don't want to stretch the finger. And now the finger rotates with the joint rotation. And with the cursor keys, you can move up in the hierarchy. And now we can rotate the finger like this. This is almost all I wanted to tell you today, but one more little thing. When you have the thumb and one step up, for example, and you rotate it, you see that the palm of the hand rotates or does funny things which it shouldn't do. This is just a pure thumb rotation. This influence here is okay on the next finger, but this is not okay. So what you do now is you deal with the so-called painting skin weights. Painting skin weights in our context means that we want to tell this joint to have no influence on this part of the geometry. So let's select the geometry and go to skin and paint skin weights. We need the option box because we need the tool settings. And you already see here that a certain parts are white and others are black. And white means the joint here has this and that influence, the joint number 12 in our case. This is the joint number 12. And if we want to paint this black in order to reduce the influence of this joint on this part of the geometry, we need to paint black. And uh, the default is white. If you paint it's the value here. This value paints white. This is not what we want. We want to paint black. That means reducing the influence. And if you have this um, cursor here for painting too large or too small, use the key B for brush to make it smaller or larger. So I reduce the influence on this part of the geometry. Now I go one joint lower in the hierarchy and maybe I extinguish the influence here as well and I go even further down in the hierarchy now I'm at this joint and this looks quite okay. Now I'm, I think I'm fine and I click here in order to get rid of all this. And now when I rotate the thumb, this part barely moves, just a little bit, which is quite okay, quite natural, but not in a drastic way like it did before. You see that the thumb wants to be rotated in this direction. You can also rotate it in this direction. And the complexity of this kind of animation is quite high because in our case with this sort of basic skeleton you need to animate by rotating um, every single joint which is of course a bit tedious. You might think we're all through now and we are for this tutorial because I don't want to keep this going for ages. The starting point is geometry and a skeleton and binding and painting skin weights. That's what you've learned in this tutorial. But if you want to animate this hand now properly and not uh, as badly as I did in this uh, example here, um, you need to install a control rig. And the control rig is a is a, a nice way to actually pick the tip of a finger and uh, move it around. Rather than rotating every single joint in this finger. Uh, that's what I did in this uh, really crude uh, animation. So a control rig can be 
installed not easily but uh, by hand as well with inverse kinematics that's a different topic and uh, I did a tutorial or two about inverse kinematics uh, which you might consider watching but the most elegant way would be to use the character animation tool in Maya for the hand but it does not work it does not work because the character animation module in Maya needs a whole skeleton that means feet a head spines etc so this is unusable for just a hand which is quite sad actually and um, I just wanted, wanted to tell you that and apart from that have a nice day